there's one more component to good prompts, or at least some good prompts, which is adding in any constraints and output formatting information. So in addition to the actual task, you know, write me a resume or uh, make me a list of coffee shop names, <laughs> uh, we also can specify requirements that further narrow down or restrict the type of output we want. Make me a numbered list. Make me a comma separated list. Use two to three sentences. Respond only with certain words, yes or no. Generate me a table. Generate me markdown content. Write me a Python function. There are so many different ways that we can constrain the output that we get. So a simple example, explain microprocessors. That's the task to a middle schooler using fewer than 200 characters. That's not easy to do, but we're constraining it. Tell me a joke. Your output should contain every letter of the alphabet at least once. So a pretty serious constraint there. I don't know why we would do that, but it is a fun demo. It does work. Uh, and it's a, a serious restriction on the type of output it can generate. Now, here's a more useful example. Up top, I'm setting the context, right? I'm initializing the scene. You are leading an interview for a front-end developer role at a tech company. I will be the candidate, and you will ask me interview questions. And then we have restrictions on how it should work. Ask me one question at a time. Once I have responded, rate my answer to your question on a scale from one to 10, and then ask the next question. So a lot of this is kind of, it blends together. You know, you, you kind of intertwine the restrictions or the constraints with the actual instructions. I'm just trying to identify these key elements that can make up a prompt. So here's another one. We set the scene, the context, act as a news article summarizer. Then we have the instructions. I will provide you with an article and you will create a summary of the main points and then certain constraints on the output. Your summary should include a two sentence overview of the article and then four to six bullet points. Your summary should not include any direct quotes from the paper. Your response should be no more than 100 words. Here is the article text. So in, at this point, I'm providing the input data. So this prompt actually includes all the different aspects we've talked about. Initializing the context providing the actual instructions, providing input data, which presumably would come after this, it just was too long to fit into this slide, and then restricting the output or constraining it. One more example, write a three paragraph blog post on why live coding interviews are a terrible method of assessing developer candidates. So that is the task. And then this one's a little different. Your response should be formatted as markdown. We'll talk more about Markdown as a separate video, uh, but this is another output format that we can specify. And something that can be useful sometimes is to basically show the format that you want, to visualize the exact syntax. Now, a lot of the time, you just want to generate text, paragraphs of text. It doesn't really matter how it's formatted, but if you ever need something specific, and this, this comes up a lot if you're working with things like Excel, you're working with programming languages, JSON, comma separated lists, SQL, where you need an exact format for the output, you can actually show it what you want. So generate me a list of 10 potential names for a ski town, coffee shop, and bakery. Sure, maybe we're starting a new business. And then I say, here is the output format I want. And if we use this syntax with the angle braces, this is just one option. It's smart enough, smart enough to know that these are going to be replaced with actual names. So it's just another way of specifying the format, right? So I could do something like, um, generate me a list of the top 10, I don't know, um, deadliest reptiles. And usually it's going to give me a numbered list by default, although it's going to hedge a bunch and <laughs> tell me that there's, it's hard to say what deadliest truly means, but you can see it's giving me a numbered list. And maybe this is what I want. But if I'm doing something, and this is a very specific example, but if I'm doing something where I just want the names, I don't need all this explanation, all this paragraph stuff. I can get more specific. I can even just tell it, all right, stop. And I can say, generate me a list of the top 10 deadliest reptiles. Only include the name of the animal. So I'm specifying some of the format here. And follow this output format. And then I'll just do name one, comma, name two, comma, name three. And we'll get a very different result, as you can see right here. And as soon as I hit stop, I could even tweak, tweak this, oops, stop generating. And I could come up with a completely different format if I wanted to. If I want them to be separated by arrows, 
I don't know why I would do this, but I can. And you can see it works just fine. So the point here is not that this is particularly useful, but it is very useful to specify output formatting in general. And we'll do this in all, pretty much all of the prompts we write. It helps to be specific about what you want. Sometimes you do have a specific format you have to adhere to, but other times it's more uh, about setting constraints as to the length or the audience, right? So I want a two sentence overview, then I want bullet points. Don't use direct quotes from a paper. You know, make sure the whole response is under 100 words. This is not as specific, I would say, as specifying this format, but it still is specifying a format, specifying the output, how we want the output to look, what it should contain. And this is a really important part of pretty much any prompt that you'll write. 